we got a new crossover being brought in into the scene inside of Languister. And if you guys didn't know already, they actually revealed it to us during the 4th anniversary event livestream. But that's all we knew. Until now that is. It's another Legend of Heroes series, as long games really be putting some love collaborating with them. The Legend of Heroes, Kuro no Koseki. And we'll be getting 3 characters from that series. I myself only ever played the 3rd installment of Cold Steel. Just a little bit though, and I didn't even know there was a sequel after that one. And apparently this game came out last year, in 2021. But enough of that rambling, I already know what you guys are here for, so let's go. The first character we got is the protagonist of the series, and his name is Vaughn. And apparently he's gonna be a free SSR character that you'll get from farming the event. He's part of the protagonist, Eulis, and Heroes of Time faction. His talent allows him to apply combo onto the enemies that will last for 2 turns, and is stackable when he deals damage, up to a max of 3 times. Then, the enemy will refresh its own combo as the round goes on each time they receive it. So I can only guess and say that either they lose all of it when they don't receive one in a single round, or they only lose the turn duration of the combo that they have as the round progresses, instead of it being turn based. Whenever he enters battle, for how many stacks of combos the enemy has, his own stats is increased by a certain amount depending on his star level, and is able to heal by a certain percent of damage dealt as HP. The healing is kinda weak compared to some of the other characters who have self healing, but it is what it is for his unique skills. He has this 1C that gives him attack and alert, which in global translation, it would be boost and precaution. Then after using this, he can act again and buffs on him do not lose their turn duration. A pretty good skill if you ask me. He has a 2C skill which is an AoE line skill that reaches 5 blocks long. It reduces their attack and int by 10% and applies taunt. And what taunt does is that Vaughn will guard allies for physical attacks within 3 blocks and have his own physical damage taken reduced by 20% only when he guards for 2 turns. This is a really weird one, with the way how his kits are, he wants to be more of an attacker than anything else. A skill like this I definitely would want to see tanks have more often, but Vaughn is just not one of those. His other 2C skill allows him to attack twice and applies 1 or 2 combo stacks after battle. This one is not bad, but imagine if it was before battle rather than after battle to apply those stacks of combos. This thing does have a 3 turn cooldown, so it's not that spammable, but that's where his 3C comes into play, which has a 3 turn cooldown. It has a passive whereas, when he enters battle using a skill and is actively attacking in battle, if the enemy has 3 stacks of combo, then that skill cooldown is reduced by 3 turns, but the effect to trigger said cooldown is 1 turn. The skill also attacks an enemy that applies one random weakening debuff before battle and if the target has 3 stacks of combo, then the damage of this 3C is further increased by 40%. For what this guy is doing, his 3C is really incredible, especially the part about his passive. So for example, let's say that he can use his unique 2C skill to be able to apply more combo, and add that on top of his talent, you already have 3 stacks of combo if you're lucky enough to apply 2 stacks of that 2C skill, that is. And then right after that, you should be pretty much set on maximizing his damage output on his 3C. You can even abuse his 3C passive a little bit by using a skill to refresh it first, then while it's on cooldown, you can use his 1C to act again, then you can have that skill be refreshed once more, since the cooldown effect is one turn. But because of this, in order to maximize his potential, you really do need to make sure that you keep up putting up those stacks of combos. And this thing is only stackable up to 3 times that lasts for 2 turns, which might be a little bit hard to stay consistent with it. I don't think this guy will be amazing in PvP because he does need to set up, and plus you do need to consider that his combos only apply after battle. In regular content, yeah he can work, especially when you're up against bosses, then his stacks will be much more noticeable. I would say that this guy would definitely be much better if he was able to apply his combo stack before battle. That's just how I feel about the character, whether you guys agree with it or not, but he probably would have been a much more solid character if that was the case. Now onto the crossover banner characters. The first one we got is Agnes. Another source is telling me that her name is Yanis, 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 whatever it's called. But I did some digging and I did find that in the game, her name is Agnes, so that's what I'm gonna call her. She's part of the Glory, Princess, and Heroes of Time faction. Her talent increases her int and defense, and when she has 3 buffs on her, at 3 and 4 stars, but at 5 and 6 stars, it'll be 2 buffs. 
she will heal 1 ally at 3, 4, 5 stars, but at 6 stars, she heals 2 allies with the lowest HP. If there are allies that are within 5 blocks of her, they are able to revive, but they get the dying effect, which will reduce their mobility by 2, their damage is reduced by 50%. I'm guessing it's damage dealt reduced by 50%, considering the negatives that you're getting. And then you cannot use active skills for 2 turns that cannot be immunized or be dispelled. At 3 and 4 stars, the revive can only be triggered up to 1 time, but at 5 and 6 stars, 2 allies are able to revive, and each ally can only revive 1 time each battle. The first part of her talent looks pretty nice, as for the second part, although reviving is pretty cool, it just gives so much drawback. Plus, I'm pretty sure they only revive for 1% of the HP, so fixed damage and follow up AoEs will for sure kill your characters. For her skills, her unique 1C skill has a 1 turn cooldown, and the range on this is very unique because in her trailer, it seems like it can reach 7 blocks long, but she can select which tile in that range, and then when you select that tile, the range will actually be a 1 ring span. If she hits an enemy with this skill, then the skill cooldown of one random ally within 2 blocks of Agnes is reduced by 1 turn. Then her unique 2C skill that has a 4 turn cooldown. It can reach 6 blocks long and 3 blocks wide. It will deal more damage to mages and holy characters while also reducing their enemies attack, int, and magic defense by 20% for 2 turns. Finally her 3C skill which has a 3 turn cooldown. For the passive, this skill cooldown is reduced by 1 whenever an ally triggers her revive. Upon using this skill, it heals allies within 4 blocks of her that dispels 2 buffs, applies heals 20% of HP after they end their turn, and damage dealt plus 15% for 2 turns, and removes the near death effect. Now this girl is pretty interesting. She's an AoE attacker that can provide support and healing, which is a great combination. And it seems like her 3C may get rid of the problem whenever an ally triggers her revive. So if that's the case, then she could actually be a really amazing character to use. Now I don't know about you guys, but that sounds dummy broken. The fact that an ally can revive, then gain those debuffs, which wouldn't even matter because if Agnes uses 3C, she can actually remove them, despite it saying it can't be dispelled. If that's the case, then we'll definitely see her a lot in PvP. For what this girl does, it is just so stupid good. The last character we got that's also on the banner is Elaine, and she's also pretty nuts. She's part of the strategy, meteor, and heroes of time faction. Her talent increases her attack and skill, and at the end of her turn, she gains one stack of sword intent for every damage dealt, and that even includes fixed damage as well. The only thing that I'm not sure if she has to be the one dealing damage or if her other teammates can help her get more sword intent stacks. Also, if she ends her turn with whatever remaining mobility she had left, those will also be converted into more stacks of sword intent. And what sword intent actually does is that it will increase her damage dealt just by a little bit. But it can only be stackable up to 10 times at 3 and 4 stars, and at 5 and 6 stars, it can only be stackable up to 7 stacks. I know it's weird that it goes down, but if you do the math, it's still a little bit more. And besides, do you guys really want to go up against an Elaine with a permanent 30% damage dealt increase? That can't be dispelled or immunized by the way? Yeah, I don't think so. After she has attacked and if her sword intent stacks are at max, then she recovers a certain amount of HP and will be able to act again. But it will consume all of her sword intent in order to do so, and the act again effect has a 1 turn cooldown. Already, this sounds really busted. As far as her unique skill goes, her 1C is an AoE line skill which has a 3 turn cooldown that reaches 6 blocks long. It will be able to disable passive skills for 2 turns. Her unique 2C skill has a 3 turn cooldown that can attack from 2 blocks, and melee soldiers will also attack with her. It can deal fixed damage before and after battle. This one is actually really not that bad. Especially when you put into consideration that fixed damage also takes part of her gaining more stacks of sword intent. She has another unique 2C skill that has a 3 turn cooldown, which is an AoE that reaches 3 blocks to select an enemy, and it will attack enemies within 3 blocks of using this skill. It will dispel 1 buff on the enemy, and it will give herself immunity to attack and end reduction for 2 turns. Then finally, her 3C. It has a 4 turn cooldown. It has a passive whereas, if she has sword intent, her mobility is increased by 2, and when entering battle by a physical attack, 
The more skill that she has compared to the enemy, the more her physical damage taken is reduced, up to 80%, and it has a 2 turn cooldown before it can take effect again. The skill can attack from 2 blocks and melee soldiers will also attack with her. After battle, up to 3 enemies within 2 blocks of Elaine will take fixed damage for one time of her own attack, which cannot be immunized, and if she defeats an enemy with this 3C, then she gets 4 more stacks of sword intent. She has a lot of damage increase in her kit, which is the biggest thing about her, with fairly decent mobility coming from her 3C, and is probably up there being one of the strongest attackers in the entire game. And I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing her in PvP. She can either be an AoE or a single target attacker, but I feel like with single target, she might actually kill better, but AoE is the safest bet when it comes to getting more stacks of sword intent. Mainly it just depends on the situation, since getting those stacks shouldn't really be much of an issue. And as insanely strong Elaine is, she doesn't compare to someone like Jintoki. Jintoki has a much better utility kit that makes him one of the most broken character in all of Languisu. And when it comes to getting his talent stacks, he doesn't really have to put much effort into getting them. With Elaine, she has to do all sorts of stuff in order to maximize her talent stacks. Which shouldn't be all that bad, and I kinda really like the way how she gets them much better because of the act again effect. So she can basically AoE to like weaken the enemy, and then act again, then you can finish them off with a single target attack. Or you can just double AoE, but I'm not really sure about the kill potential on that one. So yeah, Elaine, a pretty insane crossover character. We got two new soldiers. The first one we got is a Lancer. Their attack is increased by 30% that can counter range attacks, and their physical damage taken is reduced by 20%. So clearly these guys are better suited when up against assassins and archers, so I guess for some characters it can be pretty good, if they can use it that is. The second soldier we got is a Cavalry. Their attack and defense are increased by 25% and then additional 20% if there are no enemies within one block. Not a bad one I would say, just make sure to position yourself well to make full use of them. So with this, it should mark all of the revealed soldiers that they've shown us from the 4th anniversary livestream. So for now, we don't know what the next batch soldiers are. Either that they will reveal it to us once again, or they'll just surprise us with it. And for the most part, most of these soldiers are actually really good. There are two new exclusives that dropped. The first we're going to take a look at is for Liana, which is an armor that gives 10% HP. I know the translation is rough here, so I'll make it clear as possible for you guys, but whenever she uses her act against skill, that ally receives attack and int plus 20%. And when she summons her sky archers, their stats are increased and has an additional skill, which is prayers. It's fairly good, but no way am I going to bring Scar Archers when I can bring her 3C. It's just not happening. The second exclusive equipment is for Oboro, which is a helmet that should give him 10% HP. When he has a faction buff and uses his elemental amassing skill, I think that's what it's called. I don't really use Oboro myself. It's the one that should make him transform. So if he has a faction buff and uses that skill, he gets to start off with an additional elemental massing right away. And whenever he attacks, he receives 30% less damage as well as reflect damage. Really, really good for what Obero is doing. So if you're one of those people that uses Obero, then this exclusive will really help him out a lot so that he transforms faster. Although he does need a faction buff, but even without one, getting this for the other effects will be super helpful. We got 4 new casting skills coming along the way, the first one is for Omega. His skill is increased by 10%, and when using a skill to enter battle, his soldier range is increased by 1, and his damage though increases by 10%. Starting off strong, I like it. A lot more crit being added for this guy, which is not bad. And as for the range, something like that makes sense if he's using his 3C, and is bringing a attacking skill, since Omega's 3C only increases his own range. But still, it's a very good casting skill for him. Second one is for Lyphany, which will increase her int by 5%. When she uses her 3C, she applies an additional magic bomb onto the selected target, and it will give them a command effect where the enemy's mobility is reduced by 1, only if they're within 2 blocks of the selected enemy for 2 turns. This was something that Lyphany 3C really needed, because the thing about it is that it would pull everyone around that selected enemy, but they would be able to get away pretty easily. 
The third is for Noemi, which will also increase her int by 5%. As long as she's in her 3C, the cooldown of it is reduced by 2 turns whenever she attacks in that form. Another really good one, so as long as she's always attacking in that 3C, she can get her 3C back on the second or third turn, and then she can use it again, and then rinse and repeat. At last, the fourth one is for Meyer, which will increase her int by 10%. Super Cleaning can be released on the enemy or her team that are within 3 blocks, and she dispels a debuff for both the enemy and her team. I'm honestly really confused on this one, and I don't know how I really feel about it either. I'm guessing that Super Cleaning is something entirely different, or if it's her 3C. So overall, Omega, Lipany, and Noemi casting skills are really good if you guys use those characters. But as for Maya, I don't think it's all that great unless you want that int increase. We actually got another new component revealed to us, which should be our seventh one called Tear. With the way how its stats look, it looks like it'll be almost similar to Odin. Oh, and by the way, I'll be reading them at the final upgrade so that it's easy for you guys to read them instead of showing everything. So for its talent, if your team lands a crit on the enemy, the enemy will be inflicted with Shudder. And if they have two stacks of it, then they receive fixed damage for two times of Tyr's attack, and everyone within three blocks around that enemy. Then those stacks will get reset, and then it will apply Flaw on that enemy, whereas the next time that target enemy is attacked, they'll be crit and receives 10% crit damage. So to put it in simpler terms, the next time you attack the enemy with Flaw, you will have a 100% chance to crit them and do 10% more crit damage. Its first skill ignores guard and can only target enemies that have the flaw effect, and the crit damage of the skill is increased by 20%. Its second skill is a command. If someone on your team uses a skill and lands a crit, the cooldown of that skill is randomly reduced by 2-4 to four turns, which can only happen every one turn. Its third skill also is a command that increases the crit damage to every member on your team by 20%. Also, you can summon tier within 5 blocks of your team, and it will deal AoE damage to enemies within 3 blocks, while inflicting flaw on them. Also, the way how you get more energy with this Kavonet is by landing crits, and you can also kill off enemies to get more energy. A Kavonet that's all about crits? It's not that bad. And using that Kavonet doesn't really sound all that complicated. Basically, just land your crits, and you'll be able to do a lot of damage. For new content, we got the Dimensional Expedition, which I think is actually the 8th time it has came back, for CN that is. And as always with the collab characters arriving, there is the crossover farmable event. In this one, you can farm to collect certain materials so that you can exchange them in for rewards. And this is how you get more shards for the free SSR character bond. As for new skits, we got some spicy ones I tell ya. You could say that they get me a little excited. Hold up! Starting off with the Echo of Light, we got Vaughn and Agnes. And if you guys don't know, with crossover characters Echo of Light skins, they are actually based on from where they originated from. And I really like Vaughn's design more. My man's got the drip. Then onto the store. With skin vouchers, you can get the Christmas themed Helena skin. Now, I know that she's some people's comfort character, or to put it briefly, some people's waifu, shall I even say. Not mine though, I'm still head over heels for Angelina. Ah, I see you're a man of culture as well. There's another character with the same theme going on, and that is for Kristan. There's also two new soldier skins for the mask made in Heavy Infantry, which should be like 28 skin vouchers. So with all that being said, that should be about everything that the CN side of Lancaster are getting right now. This crossover is not bad. The two banner characters are really amazing, especially Agnes, and I feel like Vaughn could have been a little bit more better if he had something that allows him to apply his talent stacks before battle. But like I said, it is what it is. You can't really complain a whole lot about a free character, especially if they're at least pretty decent. But if you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more, and yeah, thanks for watching, your fellow Z.